Pennsylvania State Route 26. Yeah! All right, hello everyone. I am Quartermatch 437, and in this video, I am going to be talking about Pennsylvania State Route 26. Pennsylvania State Route 26 is not a particularly important route, but it has the distinction of being a route that goes right through the city where I was born and I lived my entire childhood in, which is State College. So, it is a very important road to me, and this is going to be a very personal video. So, if we take a look at the map of the route of Pennsylvania 26, we can see that it starts at the border with Maryland, and then it goes all the way up through the towns and cities of Everett, Huntington, and State College, before ending at Howard, Pennsylvania, just north of the Geographic Center of Pennsylvania. So again, not exactly a very important route. I don't understand why it's so long, but in its northern half, it does go through some noteworthy places. But anyways, it's at this point that I must remind you as always, if you like these videos, please be sure to leave a like, drop a comment down below if you have any feedback for me, or if you want to discuss this route anymore, and be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. So without further ado, let us start talking about Northbound Pennsylvania Route 26. So here at the Maryland border, we don't really get any sort of welcome to Pennsylvania signs, we just get these um, Fulton County Union Township signs, so that's kind of lame, but eh, it is what it is. I mean, how many people are realistically going to see this anyways, because this comes from also a very, very minor road in Maryland. But anyway, here we see our first reassurance keystone for Pennsylvania Route 26. And now we are meeting Pennsylvania Route 484, which goes east to Warfordsburg, and we will be turning left here. And interestingly, right about at this junction with Pennsylvania 484, we are entering into Bedford County. I believe we are coming from Fulton County. And here is our first mileage sign on Pennsylvania 26 northbound. We can see that we are getting Ingle Smith two miles away on the top line and Everett 27 miles away on the bottom line, which I think is fine because that's really the first place of any significance that Pennsylvania 26 goes through. I think Ingle Smith is an unincorporated community. And in fact, here is about two miles up the road, we get this sign for Inglesmith turn left. And we can see we're just in a church, like a graveyard right here. There isn't really anything, there isn't like any houses or anything, it's really weird. Here we are crossing under US 30, although we have no direct access to US 30 as we go through this pretty cool looking tunnel. And here in downtown Everett, we meet up with Business US 30, which is getting signed for Breezewood and Bedford. Breezewood is for eastbound 30, Business and westbound is for Bedford. Although, I didn't actually put the sign in this picture, or at least I couldn't see a sign, but anyways. We become concurrent with Business 30 for a little bit. Actually, very shortly, it's like a couple blocks, but here is where we are turning off of Business 30 to continue north on Pennsylvania 26. Actually, correction, that tunnel we passed under, that was the Pennsylvania Turnpike. This is US 30 right here going over us on this bridge. 
But once again, we have no access to US 30. And here, we have a direction sign to East US 30, which is getting signed for Breezewood and not something more significant like Greencastle. But we are getting signed for Huntington and Racetown Lake. And Racetown Lake doesn't even get a distance listed. I think Raystown Lake is like maybe 10 miles outside of Huntington or something, but at least in theory Huntington is our control city and I do like that. And after we have made the left turn, we get this mileage sign, which again doesn't have Raystown Lake, like Raystown Lake doesn't get a distance but Huntington is once again signed at 43 miles away. And we can also see a two Pennsylvania 36 Keystone, so that is pretty cool. And here we are meeting Pennsylvania 36. It is getting signed north for Roaring Springs in Altoona. Really, really glad to see Altoona there. And then after that junction, we get this three line mileage sign which has Huntington on the top line at 37 miles away. We get Saxton 12 miles away. And Hopewell is in theory what should be on the top line. But this sign is, like this sign has all the places listed in the wrong order. So I don't know why that is. But here we are meeting Pennsylvania 915, and this is the route over to Hopewell. And now we're meeting up with Pennsylvania 913, and it is getting signed for Saxton. This is the road to Saxton. And we are still getting Huntington at direct signs at 26 miles away, fittingly. Here we are meeting Pennsylvania Route 164, and it is getting signed for Martinsburg. And then after that junction, we get McConnellstown, 17 miles away on the top line of this mileage sign. And Huntingdon is 22 miles away on our bottom line, so Huntingdon still on the bottom line. I've been saying Huntington, 10, like T-O-N. I said that also once or twice in the business and alt 220 video, but anyways, here we are approaching the town of Huntington, and we are meeting up with US 22. It is getting signed for Mount Union going eastbound, which should be Lewistown, and now we are getting signed for Huntington and State College, so that is really cool. State College is the next sort of major place, well, yeah, it is the next major place that 26 will go through. Here we see a Welcome to Huntingdon sign as we go past Portstown Park. This was always one of my favorite places to be as a kid because that bridge over there carries the Norfolk Southern Middle Division going to Harrisburg. I thought it was really cool that in the park you could see the trains go by and over to our right is a playground area where I would always have a lot of fun swinging, going down slides and stuff, so good memories. Here in downtown Huntingdon at this intersection, on the other side um, where we're going to make this left turn we can see a two East US 22 shield. Um, keep this in the back of your head for later because I'm going to have something to say about that when we go southbound. But anyways, after we leave the town of Huntingdon, we get a mileage sign with Mc McLevy's Fort 15 miles away on the top line. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that and even though like, I live obviously not that far away from here, but I think there's probably a, 
a few different ways I've heard this pronounced. I'm just going to go with Nick Levy's for it. But anyway, State College is on our bottom line at 30 miles away, and that is absolutely the right choice. Here we are meeting and going to become concurrent with Pennsylvania 305 for a short bit. And it is getting signed for Alexandria going westbound. And we are still getting signed for State College 16 miles away. McLevy's Fort is there because that is where this concurrency will end. And here is eastbound Pennsylvania 305 splitting off. And then we get this mileage sign with Pine Grove Mills, nine miles away on the top line. State College still holding up on our bottom line at 15 miles away. And just before we get to Pine Grove Mills, here we are crossing a mountain, and we get a pretty good view here as we also get this truck alert sign which shows you a little map of the road you're about to take. So you want to be really careful going down this hill because there's also a sharp curve coming up ahead. Here in Pine Grove Mills, we are meeting up with and going to become concurrent with Pennsylvania Route 45. It is getting signed for Bullsburg six miles away and we are getting signed for State College now only five miles away and West 45 gets signed for Water Street which is an unincorporated community although I don't really think you can sign anything else for 45. In theory you could sign it for Huntingdon or Holidaysburg or something like that but in order to get to those places honestly you would have been better off just taking 22 there back in Huntington, Huntington so there's not really any other good option so yeah anyway leaving Pine Grove Mills now we get a reassurance keystone of only North 26, no mention of East 45, and we get a mileage sign with the same places we just saw on the direction sign. <laughs> so here is where Pennsylvania 45 splits off to go to Bullsburg, and we come to... <laughs> This intersection used to be really, really crazy. You can see this yellow warning sign here, which basically has a diagram of what the intersection used to look like. But now we can see here, it is just a regular intersection with stoplights. There were no stoplights before. It had that goofy ah design. But anyway, yeah, here is where Pennsylvania splits off. It got signed, it's still signed for Bulls, where we're still signed for State College. Just after that intersection, we get another mod sign. Now State College is on our top line at four miles away, and we get Belfont on the bottom line at 15 miles away. And you know what? Pennsylvania 26 doesn't actually go to Belfont, but. I feel like this mod sign is fine because you're angling towards Belfont, which I'll talk about more a bit later. Here is a direction sign that has never made sense to me. We are getting Fairbrook and Gatesburg on this sign, Fairbrook being 5 miles away and Gatesburg is 8 miles away, and when you get to Fairbrook, there is nothing telling you that you are there and to get to Gatesburg you have to get off of Pennsylvania 26 and take a few back roads to get there and Gatesburg is an unincorporated community so I don't even know what the point of this sign is so like why is this here? Also, this is the intersection of Whitehall Road, and if you turn right, um, this leads over to Business 322, which is also Atherton Street, and it leads to a bunch of restaurants and stuff, so pretty cool. 
Here we are on the outskirts of State College, and here, Pennsylvania Route 26 is going to split up into the divided one-way streets of Beaver and College Avenue. And we can also see we are getting a direction sign here for Belfont 11 miles away. Again, even though Pennsylvania 26 doesn't actually go to Belfont, I think it kind of makes sense. And here at the intersection of Beaver Avenue and Atherton Street, um, Business 322 is getting signed for Phillipsburg and Lewistown. I think those are good choices because those are the control cities that 322 will have whenever you meet up with it at either end of Business 322. And while we're in downtown State College, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Goldstone Creamery. This is the one on Beaver Avenue. I think it's East Beaver Avenue. But anyway, yeah, I've been to this Goldstone Creamery a few times. They have really good ice cream, so you should go check out Goldstone Creamery if you haven't. Really good ice cream. Here is where our one-way streets come back together as we get another direction sign um, for Belfont, 10 miles away, and the other direction is getting signed for Huntington, so like I said, I think that's fine. Here we are meeting University Drive, and this, this uh, meeting is really interesting. Although, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about when we go southbound because I think it'll be a bit more interesting to talk about there, but this isn't just your typical, ordinary intersection right here. And on the other side of University Drive, we are getting this Reassurance Keystone, North 26 to US 322, 220, and Interstate 80. So that is really cool. Leaving State College, we get a beautiful view of some of these mountains to our north. And we also get a mileage sign with Belafonte on the top line and Milesburg, 13 miles away on the bottom line. And in this case, they are completely favoring Pennsylvania Route 150, which we are going to be meeting a few miles up the road. And I can kind of understand not signing anything directly on Pennsylvania 26 at this point because we don't really go through any more important towns, any even remotely sizable towns. But I feel like putting Milesburg on the bottom line here, I kind of agree with the Xavier 456. He said this bottom line should be Lock Haven because I do agree with that secondary of Belfont because 150 will be going there. That is a decently sized town. But no, the bottom line I think should be Lock Haven. I agree with him on that. Because technically Pennsylvania 26 also doesn't go to Lock Haven, but you meet up with Pennsylvania 64 which is the route you would then take to get to Lock Haven. So, yeah, I would say exchange the bottom line for Lock Haven. But once again, I do agree that um, you should favor some other roads here, because again, we don't really have anything noteworthy left on Pennsylvania 26. I just wanted to go on a personal little rant here about this sign right here. So, this road leading off from Pennsylvania 26 right here, this will take you over to Lamont, which is the town that I lived in from the ages of 4 to 18. And we can see this nice little sign here for Lamont. And we also get a picture of Mount Nittany and Peak fall colors, so that's really cool. However, in about 2019 or so, um, PennDOT took down that sign, 
and replace it with this abomination. And I am not really happy about that because um, if you're coming from downtown State College, this is the road you would take to get to my mom's house. And yeah, I just thought the other sign looked much nicer. So why'd you have to go and do that? And uh, this sign sucks. I hate it. Anyway, now we are meeting up with US-322, and it is getting signed east for Lewistown, and we are getting signed north for Belfont, so I agree with those signs, although West-322 is getting signed to Interstate 80, 99, and US-220, but the only thing listed is Phillipsburg. Now, that's a fine control city for 322, but if you're going to mention those other highways, how about you put a control city for them? Like, I don't know, Altoona? Like, you sign it... <laughs> like, once you get on to 322, there's overheads for Phillipsburg and Altoona, so why is it not there? Or, I don't know, maybe you could put to New York City, because 99 is going to go over to 80, and then 80 will take you to... Ah, oh, Penda, Penda, Penda. Here is the aforementioned Pennsylvania 150 junction, and we can see that it is getting signed for Belfont, and that is the right choice because 150 will go over to Belfont. And now we are getting signed for Pleasant Gap, which is an unincorporated community, but here's the thing apparently, there are about 3,000 people that live there. So, you know what? I don't think it's too bad. I mean, maybe you could have Lock Cave in here, again, because of meeting Pennsylvania 64. But, compared to other choices that they can make, which is not very many of them, I, I, I don't think this is all too bad. And then, after that junction, we get a mileage sign with Pleasant Gap on the top line at 5 miles away, and Lock Haven is on the bottom line at 31 miles away, so they're actually doing what Xavier and I said they should do at that other mileage sign where Milesburg was on the bottom line. They're actually putting Lock Haven here, and yeah, that's a sensible choice. And we also get a North 26 Reassurance Keystone to Interstate 80, so good job here. Here in Pleasant Gap, we are meeting Pennsylvania Route 144 as we get a whole bunch of signs for 2 Interstate 80, 2 Interstate 99, 2 US 220. And at this direction sign, we are getting 144 signed for Belfont, 5 miles away, and Lewistown is signed for a southbound because it is going over to US 322 and then 322 will take you to Lewistown so that is perfectly done this all right here and then leaving Pleasant Gap we get this mile sign with Lamar 16 miles away on the top line and Block Haven 26 miles away on the bottom line so they're entirely favoring Pennsylvania 64 here which is sensible at least because there really 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 isn't much of interest left on Pennsylvania 26 at this point and here is the junction that I showed you at the beginning of my Pennsylvania 64 video which I will leave up in the corner and we can see once again it is getting sent for Zion and we are getting signed for Interstate 80, 5 miles away, and State College, 11 miles away, if you want to go back there. And as we make our left turn and head towards Interstate 99, we get this sign telling us to Interstate 80. If you want to get on Interstate 80, you should follow northbound US 220 and Interstate 99. And Pennsylvania 26 will become concurrent with those highways for a short distance. And we get no control city, although southbound is getting signed for State College. And if we look on Interstate 99 itself, right before this interchange, we can see Pennsylvania 26 North follow North Interstate 99 US 20. And 
This is one of my own pictures. I actually took this earlier today as of recording this because I just got back from a vacation and <laughs> I wanted to get a picture of all the signs that I see basically every day for whatever reason. But here is the actual split point to go over to Interstate 99 South and we can see the control city of Belfont for North, which at this point does not make sense anymore because you would have had other options to go to Belfont already and the only reason they're signing it is because of the last exit that 99 has before it gets to 80. So why does this not say New York City or heck even like, I don't know, Cleveland or Youngstown or something? I, I don't know. This is really, really stupid. And here we have reassurance shields for the three routes on this concurrency. Pretty cool that we get an interstate shield, a US shield, and a keystone. All three of the main types of routes in Pennsylvania all on one pavement. That's pretty cool. And of course, here is the exit that I live off of. Pennsylvania 550 for Belfont and Zion. The reason that we were signing Belfont back there, presumably, I mean, still really, really dumb. And then here is the last mileage sign on Interstate 99 with Howard 11 miles away on the top line and Lockhaven 27 miles away in the bottom line. And okay, Howard being on the top line makes sense because that is the very, very last place of significance that Pennsylvania 26 will go through before its northern terminus. Although, Block Haven on the bottom line, just because that's where 220 is going to go after it leaves its concurrency, it's going to have what, 80 here shortly. And here, off of the exit from Interstate 80, we got this direction sign, Belfont and State College southbound, good stuff. And we can see that we are getting signed for Howard as we leave the concurrency with US 220. So, as of the time that I'm recording this, which is right now, actually about a week later than when I started for reasons outside of my control, but anyway, the Interstate 99 and 80 High Speed Interchange Project is just about to begin and when it is completed, local access to Pennsylvania 26 will be lost. It is currently there, but when the interchange is complete, you won't have local access to Pennsylvania 26. So, a couple miles east of the current 9980 mess of an interchange, they built a brand new interchange specifically for that purpose and I'm going to talk about this more very shortly, don't you worry, I'm going to have quite a lot to say about this. But anyway, here at this direction sign where Jacksonville is straight ahead one mile, Howard is two miles away at our left turn, and Hublersburg is three miles away at the right turn, pretty cool numbers. Um, here we are turning to go to Howard. And this is what downtown Howard looks like. On the other side of Howard, here we are crossing the Foster Joseph Sayers Reservoir here in Bald Eagle State Park. And as we can see, the scenery here is really beautiful. Pretty cool stuff to see. And now we are ending northbound Pennsylvania 26 at this intersection with Pennsylvania 150 where it's getting signed for Milesburg and Lockhaven, and I think those are pretty good choices for that. And we also get a straight up arrow for Romola. I don't even know where the heck that is. And it doesn't even show up on Google Maps, so... Mm -hmm. Also, there was an N Pennsylvania 26 Keystone, but I just decided not to show it because this video is already getting way longer than it probably needed to be. 
But with that, now we are going to start talking about Southbound, Pennsylvania 26. And here at this intersection once again, we can see that we are on 150 southbound, getting signed for Milesburg straight ahead. And then South, Pennsylvania 26 is getting signed for Howard as opposed to State College. Howard only one mile away. And then we get this road leading over to Romola, wherever the heck that is once again. And here we are crossing over the Foster Joseph Sayers Reservoir once again. Beautiful scenery one more time. Before we even get to downtown Howard, we are already getting our first mileage sign on Pennsylvania 26 southbound, and Hoblersburg is on the top line at 5 miles away, and on the bottom line we get Belfont at 11 miles away. No! Absolutely not! This should be State College! State College should be on the bottom line because there is nothing in Hoblersburg. It should absolutely not be on this sign. The top line should be Belfont. Ugh. PennDOT being super provincial. And again, Pennsylvania 26 doesn't even go to Belfont. They're just signing this because of Interstate 99. So, again, put Belfont on the top line and put State College on the bottom line. Ugh. God, this is so stupid. And here we are at this intersection once again where we are going to be making a right turn to continue on southbound Pennsylvania 26 again sign for Belfont as opposed to State College and then the left turn is getting signed for Jacksonville and straight ahead is Hubblersburg the booming metropolis of Hubblersburg the reason it was on the top line back there still absolutely ridiculous but now, to add insult to injury, here is the 26 local access interchange to Interstate 80, and we can see that it is getting signed for Belfont and Blockhaven! Blockhaven! Not even like Williamsport, because that is, in theory, the next control city that 80 and 220 are gonna have, as opposed to like New York City. <laughs> like, what the heck? Are you freaking kidding me, Pendot? This is a brand new interchange and you're signing 80 for Lockhaven! Lockhaven! Why Lockhaven? And if we look at the ramps to Interstate 80, Lockhaven, straight ahead, Belfon, turn right, and then another sign for Lockhaven, straight ahead. One of the 80 shields has fallen off and it hasn't even been two years since this interchange has been constructed. Oh my goodness gracious, this is ridiculous. PennDOT, why? Why are you doing this? Sign at least Williamsport, or even better, New York City, or even both of them. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, this is awful. Like I said, this is a brand new interchange. But anyway, here we come to the beginning of Interstate 99 once again, and we get both Belfont and State College on the direction sign. And you know what? That's fine, I suppose. I mean, Belfont should be 99 secondary right here. And the other way is signing for Howard once again because that's where Pennsylvania 26 is going. Now we get our reassurance shields of Interstate 99, US 220, and Pennsylvania 26 once again. And I wanted to specifically mention these ones because that Pennsylvania 26 keystone there is a pretty new one. I think it was only added within the last year or two, something like that. This is what the old one used to look like. Not very good looking in my opinion. I'm glad they replaced this. And now here we are splitting off of Interstate 99 and US 220 as we get signed to Pennsylvania 64 Pleasant Gap. So I think that makes sense because again, Pleasant Gap, unincorporated community, but again, there's like 3,000 people that live there, so it's fine. If you want to go to State College, you're better off just staying on 99 because it's the faster route. Now we're meeting the beginning of Pennsylvania 64 once again. It is signed for Zion at the left turn. Even though once you get onto Pennsylvania 64, Zion will disappear from the signs, and I think this should just say Lamar here. And for our right turn, 
we were getting time for a closing gap in two miles, which, again, I think is fine because, again, if you wanted to get to State College, you were better off just staying on 99. But anyway, here in downtown Pleasant Gap, once again, we meet Pennsylvania 144, going in the southbound direction on 26. We are now getting signed straight ahead for State College at 9 miles. Um, Pennsylvania 144, once again, Lewis Town Belfont, perfectly done here. And then on the other side of that intersection, we get a mileage sign and a reassurance keystone where State College is now on our top line at 9 miles away, and we get Huntingdon on the bottom line at 40 miles away. So, this kind of does make sense, because we're getting closer to State College. It doesn't really need to be on our bottom line anymore. And Huntingdon is the next logical choice for Pennsylvania 26 going southbound. So, this I can appreciate. Good job, PennDOT. And now we're meeting the southern terminus of Pennsylvania 150 once again. It is getting signed for Belfont. This is where you sign Belfont on this route and a couple other, like, state routes, not the main highways in the area. And we got a direction sign for our left turn. State College, four miles away. Penn State is four miles away. And this makes sense because... PennDOT likes to do the secondaries, and I mean, in this, I guess it's fine to still sign State College because, I mean, we're technically still north of downtown. But, anyways, we make that left turn, and now we get another mile sign with State College four miles away on the top line, and Huntington is 35 miles away on the bottom line. And, interesting trivia for you guys that stoplight you can see up in the distance. That is where you would turn to go over to my mom's house. There's another turn that you have to make, but I'm not going to tell you where it is. Here's our interchange with 322 going in this direction, and we get a pull through South Ridge State College, 322 East, Lewistown, next left. Again, good stuff there. And then on this gantry, 322 is once again signed for a 2 Interstate 80, 99, and US 220. But now we get another line, which is Penn State University. If you take 322 West here, you will be going away from the university, as opposed to taking the most direct route, which is to stay straight on 26, and then turn on to University Drive, or if you want to access some of the other buildings on campus, you go into downtown State College and make a couple, like there are a few places you can make a right turn from there. So why Penn State University? This should be where Phillipsburg goes, and then on the bottom line, you put New York City or Altoona, something like that, for one of these other highways that 322 is going to. Oh my god. Once again. Once again. And why is this sign the one that gets screwed up on both directions here? Arguably this is the most important sign. So why is it the one that has the worst information? But anyways, here is our last mileage sign that we get with State College on the top line at two miles away, Huntington. 33 miles away, yeah, that's all good. And now, here we are at the University Drive Interchange once again. And if you have Penn State University on this sign, why was it back there at the other one? Oh, oh my god. I just want to talk about this interchange a bit more, so... If we look on University Drive, we can see that 26 is signed for State College and Belfont here, and I think this does make sense because technically we have still not reached the downtown yet, so it's fine to still keep State College on there, and again, Belfont makes sense because you're angling towards Belfont um, with the Pennsylvania 150 interchange. Also, here's an overhead view of what this all looks like. 
pretty cool to see a state route have basically like a built up interchange with some street in State College. But anyways, here is downtown State College and we also get a look at Old Main off to our right, which is basically like the White House of Penn State. And we can also see some college students walking along beside us. So really, really cool. We are approaching the intersection with Business 322 Adderton Street. And we get this overhead sign telling you that if you want to stay on southbound Pennsylvania 26, you want to stay in this lane. And then for Business 322, we get these... Acorn Shields! Acorn Shields! And stay going to my whole town! And there are Acorn Shields for Business 322 here! Who was responsible for this? Was it PennDOT? Was it the Borough of State College? Who was responsible for this? Because this is this is irredeemable. Why? Why are there acorn shields here? I don't want to see acorn shields in my downtown hometown hometown downtown. Oh, why? No. But anyway, at the intersection where we meet Business 322, we get the same control cities that it had as we saw on the northbound, and we get straight up for Huntington. Like, if you go straight through this intersection, you'll be on 26, sign for Huntington, so that is good. Here is where Beaver Avenue rejoins with College Avenue as we get a two-lane um, Pennsylvania 26, where one lane is southbound, the other lane is northbound. Now we are meeting Blue Course Drive, and I specifically wanted to point out this intersection, because Blue Course Drive has always been a very, very interesting road to me. We get this two business 322 shield, in case you want to go over that way, further up, uh, North Atherton Street and also you can see that speed limit 50 sign over there in the distance however this picture was from 2012 and in 2017 they reduced the speed limit on Blue Course Drive to 45 miles an hour because apparently it wasn't safe or something like that but anyway, here is what Blue Course Drive looks like. It's very interesting. Like I said, you have two lanes of traffic going one direction with a median that has some trees in it and then two lanes of traffic going the other way. So I think this is like a boulevard or something. I don't know. Like I said, very interesting. There's also some pavement for walking, biking. Anyway, now we are meeting Pennsylvania 45 once again, and this is a look at the Goofy Ah uh, intersection once again. Now at the new design, which is the regular version, there is also a direction sign for straight ahead, 127 miles, and at the left turn, Pennsylvania 45 is getting signed for Bullsburg in 5 miles. And then on the other side of this intersection, we get Reassurance Keystones for Pennsylvania 26 and 45, Water Street on the top line for Pennsylvania 45, 22 miles away, and Huntingdon 27 miles away on the bottom line for us. So again, Water Street, unincorporated community, but I mean, I don't really know what else you're going to sign here, because there aren't really any other logical options. In Pine Grove Mills, we are splitting off from Pennsylvania 45 and left. We are getting signed for Huntington as it gets signed for Water Street once again. Pennsylvania 45, Water Street straight ahead. And then we get this mileage sign with McLevy's Fort, nine miles away on the top line. And we get another 26 miles away on the bottom line where Huntington is our control city. Really, really cool sign right here. We come to the top of the mountain here, and we get another one of these map signs as we enter Huntington County. 
And this mountain was always really, really fun to drive down, at least going this way, because you can go pretty fast, and it's not entirely dangerous. In McLevy's Fort, we are meeting and going to be concurrent with Pennsylvania 305 once again, as we get signed for Huntingdon, 16 miles away, and 305 is getting signed for Alexandria, 18 miles away. I think that's a fine place for that route. That is also where it will end. And then, just a short mile up the road, we are splitting off from Pennsylvania 305, and we got another direction sign with the spices on it. And now, we are getting a mileage sign with Huntingdon on the top line, and Everett on the bottom line at 62 miles away. And, yeah, that's really the only place of significance that 26 goes to after Huntington, but I'm really not so sure that you should have Everett on the bottom line from 62 miles away. That is really far away, and Everett is a really small town, only about like 2,000 people. So, I'm going to be honest, once again, I think I agree with Xavier 456 here. Maybe you could just have Huntington be a one line here, or, I don't know, if you really want to have two lines so bad, maybe sign something for 22 here, because we will be meeting up with US 22 in downtown Huntingdon. As we are just a couple miles outside of Huntingdon, we get this sign for Raystown Lake, which is telling you if you want to go to Raystown Lake, you should continue to follow Pennsylvania 26. And now we come back into Huntingdon, we get the Borough of Huntingdon sign and an official welcome sign, so pretty cool. Now we come to this intersection in downtown Huntingdon once again, where we can see that if you want to go on eastbound US-22, you turn left. However, when you get to 22 from this intersection, if you make the left turn, you actually can go both ways, and in fact, if you go westbound on 22, there's a bunch of businesses and stuff that you can access, so I don't know why this sign doesn't just say 2 US 222, so I don't know, I think it's really stupid how this is all set up. But anyways, on the other side of downtown Huntingdon, this intersection right here, this is actually the point um, for the south that I've been on on Pennsylvania 26. Every time I've come to this intersection, I've always gone straight through it because I've never had any reason to continue going through Huntington. So, it's interesting. Yeah, this is a pretty important route for me, but yet I've only been on about half of it or so just to this intersection right here. Now we are meeting US-22 directly once again, and south we are signed straight ahead for Everett. All right, fine. Yeah, that is the next major place. Well, the next relevant place, I guess I should say, that 26 is going. And we don't see the control city for East 22, which would probably be Mount Union. And we see Wes is getting signed for Water Street in Holidaysburg. If you're going to sign two, how about one of them just be Holidaysburg? Because, I mean, I guess I can understand signing Holidaysburg, but it should be a secondary. And the primary should be Altoona, which should also be listed on this sign. Oh, uh, goodness gracious, Pendot. This is absolutely ridiculous. After that interchange, we get another mileage sign and reassurance keystone combo. McConnell's town is four miles away on the top line, and Everett is on our bottom line at 40 miles away. And I guess this makes sense. I don't suppose there is anything else you really should be signing along the way. And in the distance, we can see a brown sign for Raystown Lake Recreational Area, next 20 miles, and also Trowel Creek State Park at 22 miles away. So that is some helpful tourist information for you. 
here is the first point where, or I guess the main point where you would turn off a of Pennsylvania 26 to go to Racetown Lake. We get a whole bunch of information on these brown and blue signs. And then a little further down the road, we get another mild sign for Saxton, 11 miles away on the top line. And Ever is now 30 miles away on the bottom line. Here we are meeting Pennsylvania 164 once again. And this time we don't see any control cities for it, so that's interesting. Here's another mild sign with Saxton on the top line, five miles away, and Everett on the bottom line at 24 miles away. Now we're meeting Pennsylvania 913 once again. It is the route to Saxton. And then we get Everett once again on this direction sign. Another mild sign, Everett on the bottom line, 20 miles away. Hopewell, the top line at seven miles away. But now, once we are only 14 miles away from Everett, we get a mild sign with Everett on the top line, and we get Clearville on the bottom line at 22 miles away. And Clearville is not even like a real town. It is an unincorporated community. So I think you could probably have something else on this bottom line. I'm thinking maybe Cumberland, Maryland, because eventually the road that 26 turns into in Maryland will go over to Interstate 68. I don't know, maybe there's a better choice than that, but I really don't know what it could be. And then we are meeting Pennsylvania Route 36 once again, which is getting signed for Loisburg and not Altoona. Why not Altoona? I mean, I guess maybe you would have had better routes to Altoona um, further back up north, but like, still, Altoona is a major city. You should be signing it on 36. Loiser, what the heck even is that? And now, past that intersection, we are getting another mile sign with Everett nine miles away on the top line, and our bottom line is Breezewood, 16 miles away. No, oh, not Breezewood. Oh, the 70s strip, 30, uh, that, that goofy uh, mess down there. No, I don't want to see Breezewood on here. I want to see, like, I don't know, something like Cumberland, uh, Chambersburg, something more significant on 30 or anything at all. Not Breezewood. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. Here we are at this intersection to US 30, Bedford and Breezewood once again, which would absolutely be, I don't know, McConnellsburg would be a better choice at least. And then for westbound, it should be Greensburg. And then past that intersection, now we get these interesting anomalies of mile signs where each one is only a single line but there are still two of them i don't know why pendot did it like this everett is on the first one and bedford is on the bottom one so again you could probably go with something like greensburg chambersburg cumberland and then in downtown Everett, you're meeting up with Business US 30 once again. And everything is eight miles away, such as um, West US 30 Business getting signed for Bedford, East Business US 30 getting signed for Grievous Wood, and Clearville is for us as we make this left turn. Again, you could probably have better choices for all three of those things. So this is Clearville. This is the downtown of the huge city of Clearville as we get this right turn for Pennsylvania 26. We don't even get like a direction sign telling us like what our next control city is. I, again, again, I argue it should be like Cumberland or something. But anyways, now we're meeting Pennsylvania 484 once again as it gets signed for Warfordsburg, which is an unincorporated community, I believe. It should be 
Hancock or heck, I don't know. Maybe just put like 270 here. I really don't know. There's not a whole lot down here. And we can also see we are entering back into Fulton County very briefly. And on our last mileage sign on Pennsylvania 26, we can see that Piney Grove is on our top line at 3 miles away. And our bottom line is Hancock at 16 miles away. So they are favoring eastbound on um, Interstate 68, which will take you over to 70. But again, I feel like... It should just be Cumberland or heck, if you're going to favor 68 eastbound, maybe just put Baltimore or DC on it, something like that. And now here is our unceremonious end of southbound Pennsylvania Route 26 where we don't get any sort of welcome to Maryland or anything like that. We just end up in the middle of some trees. Okay, let us now talk about Quarter Mons 437's the way it should be for Pennsylvania State Route 26. I'm going to say going north from the beginning it should be Everett because that's the first real significant place you're going to hit and the only one you're going to see for quite a long time until you get to Huntingdon which I believe should be the next place. And then after Huntingdon, it should be State College for all the reasons. And then leaving State College, I'd say sign Belfont just until you get to the Pennsylvania 150 intersection. And then after that, I would sign it for Lock Haven because of meeting up with Pennsylvania 64. And then after Pennsylvania 64, I would say New York City because of the concurrency with 99, which then dumps into 80. And then after the end of Interstate 99, when Pennsylvania 26 splits off to just be on itself, I'd say Howard, because that is the last place that should be mentioned at the end of 26 northbound. I guess after that, probably then also Haven again for Pennsylvania 150 and then southbound is simultaneously more straightforward and convoluted at the same time so from the beginning at Pennsylvania 150 the end of 26 like the northern end of 26 I'd say from the jump go State College then Huntingdon Everett and then this is where things start to get tricky because um, what do you sign after Everett before the route has ended I say you can make a case for Cumberland because that is the closest major city at the southern end of 26 but you could also go Baltimore because of 68 going east to 70 which will then take you over to Baltimore and DC. So kind of tricky for all of this, but I think this is what makes sense. All right, I would like to outline my plans for the next few road videos on this channel. And right up next on the docket after this video is going to be a reboot of both of my US 322 videos, the very first Control City videos I ever did on this channel because the Eastbound one had a lot of technical issues and in general both of them had a lot of rookie mistakes that I made because I did not know how to properly sign Control Cities for US routes so I will be trying to clear up any misinformation I may have given in those videos. But after that, then we will probably be taking a most unlikely timed vacation down to the southeast. We are going to be doing US Route 501, just because I thought it would be fun to do a strictly southeast route that wasn't for a special occasion, like the Dirt Pog's birthday, which I did a video on North Carolina 42 for. 
But then after that, I'm going to be rebooting my Pennsylvania Route 33 video, which I did in October of 2023, because, yeah, it didn't really have any technical issues like that, but I feel like it is the worst video I have made. I mean, yeah, there were technical issues in the 322 Eastbound video and the misinformation, but I feel like it's from a pure pacing standpoint and just overall cringiness of watching it, I feel like that one just takes the cake for just being a really bad video. But with all that said, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video about Pennsylvania Route 26. As always, please be sure to leave a like down below, as well as a comment if you have any feedback for me, or if you want to discuss this highway any, any further, and be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. So until the next video, everyone, peace. Have a good one.